Hi, my name is Spencer Vandergriff. I am the flutist in the Aura Contemporary Ensemble at the University of Houston. It is my pleasure to be able to speak with Dr. Chad Robinson, the composer of Point and Line to Time, who is based in Houston, Texas. Hi everyone, it's great to be here. I'm thrilled to be a part of this and excited to be working with Spencer and Aura. Mm -hmm. Thank you for uh, allowing us to include you and your work in our one-on-one -on -one video project and thank you uh, for uh, speaking with me. Um, so far I have really just enjoyed working on and performing point in line um, to time. I um, noticed in the uh, dedication you had mentioned that this piece is a homage to uh, Wassily Kandinsky. Um, could you talk on that uh, connection between this piece and his works? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm, I've always been a big fan of visual art, especially painting. Um, so I've kind of uh, studied on my own time, not formally, um, for many, many years now, decades even. And um, Kandinsky is someone that's always really spoken to me as someone who's really able to create um, truly abstract art, but yet that is powerful. So I feel like it's not just um, kind of strange things being lost on a canvas, that it really, um, his abstract ideas culminate into something. And in his book, which is actually um, where I based this work on, his book is titled Point and Line to Plane. He really talks about his technique and his um, philosophy of abstract art, um, starting with something as simple as just a point, you know, on the canvas and how the point can actually um, kind of explode into action and become a line shooting across the canvas. And then the canvas itself being the plane, the kind of backdrop to it. Um, and that uh, book just really spoke to me in general about abstraction and about getting abstraction to lead to a culmination of its different ideas. Um, so in point in line to time, um, I tried to convert um, his beliefs and philosophy into abstraction into something musical. Um, we don't have a plane or a canvas in music. Our, our backdrop, so to speak, or the background of our works is time. And so it becomes point and line to time. And two of the kind of elements, as you'll see, and this is the point, which is a short kind of staccato figure, this that, that, that. And then that is, um, that kind of develops on its own way. And then you have the line, which is this long kind of sustained note, which is that point just kind of springing into action. And so then you see these sustained notes coming out. And then little by little, they begin to culminate into this kind of wave-like melody like you would expect in a normal tune. But I try to really show, um, as Kandinsky did in the book, to show the process of starting with a point, it exploding into a line, and then those point and lines kind of moving together um, to create something. Um, interestingly enough, I actually have a um, painting here by Kandinsky. This is a refrigerator magnet painting. As I mentioned, I was a big fan. And you can see here, um, if you look off at the edges, you can see these kind of points. And then you can see these lines. And they're not really interconnected. They're just kind of out in their own space. And then as you get into um, the middle of the canvas where he's truly drawing your attention, all of the points and lines tend to culminate into one kind of major idea or one climax, so to speak. And so again, that's something I tried to recreate in this by in the beginning, focusing just on the point during the first minute or so. And then during the second minute, focusing more on the line, these long sustained notes. And then eventually when you reach the climax, it comes into this wave-like melody. So that's it in a nutshell. Um, interestingly enough, it's based more off the book than it is off any single work of his. So it's really his philosophy of abstract art and trying to translate that into musical terms. Mm-hmm. Great. Um, so I um, know that uh, you, you were on staff at uh, Texas Southern and are the uh, artistic director for the uh, uh, Texas New Music Ensemble. Um, could you tell me what, um, tell me a little bit on your work uh, with those two uh, um, organizations? 
Oh, yes. Um, so I've been at Texas Southern University um, for just over a year now. And um, I've been working with them to um, kind of uh, invigorate their composition department and trying to bring a lot of um, young composers in there. Um, and so that's been um, a lot of fun. I also get to teach a really wonderful class there um, that is a kind of um, aesthetics course over all of the fine arts, in fact, and how they're interconnected and connected to our daily lives. Um, as you can tell from this work, Point in Line to Time, um, the interconnections of separate fine arts is something I really find fascinating. So um, in a, being able to um, teach that subject, which was actually um, about half of my PhD dissertation was written on that subject is really exciting. And then, of course, um, really um, working on recruiting young composers and bringing them into our program has been a lot of fun. So uh, I'm excited to have been there for just over a year now, and I'm excited to uh, continue with my work there. As you mentioned, I'm also the artistic director and executive director, in fact, and even the founder of Texas New Music Ensemble. Um, and we've been around for about eight years now. We perform um, works solely by composers living and working here in Texas. Um, we really feel like these composers have a lot to say. We have a lot of great composers here and um, we really try to create a place for their music um, as one whole to really be shown and expressed to the Texas public. We tour every year um, all around the state as well as usually have three to four concerts in the Houston area as part of our kind of subscription series. Um, this year, of course, things are very different. Um, so we're doing some things differently, just like Aura is. Mm -hmm. And so we decided this year we really wanted to, um, we were worried about trying to create a virtual or an online experience that would be kind of less than a concert. We, we didn't want it to be almost a concert. We wanted to really do something more. Um, and so something that came to us very similar in some ways to what you're doing was to create um, short solo pieces and then um, have interviews with the composers, which is exactly what we're doing just like <laughs> this. We're focusing though on, um, we're in collaboration with the pianist Yan Shin this year. And so she'll actually be performing as our only performing musician. And we've actually commissioned 12 new works from 12 Texas composers, each one to be premiered virtually. Um, we're doing the entire season, just um, releasing videos, so three pieces at a time. The first set of videos will be released, be released November 1st, and then we'll continue on after that. Um, we're not charging any fees or tickets, and there's not a certain time you have to tune in. Just whenever it's convenient, you can hop on and hear some of these pieces. The only stipulation that we've put on the composers is that we've asked that the piece somehow be in response to this tumultuous year that has been 2020. So whether that has to do um, you know, with the coronavirus, with Black Lives Matter, um, just with the general ups and downs of life during this um, really strange time in the world, um, climate change, the fires um, in you know, the Western part of the country, the hurricanes here, um, mm. and then everything going on in other parts of the world as well. We just felt like we wanted to create a season of what would be truly tumultuous works because um, it's just that time. And I think art has to, you know, honestly represent the world around us. And so we get 12 kind of snapshots from 12 um, extremely skilled Texas composers, each one their representation of, you know, what this year has been, this world, etc. cetera. Um, mm -hmm. So we're really looking forward to that. And again, we'll release the first one on November 1st. So I'm excited about mm -hmm. that. You know, it's uh, from time to time that I think like just how historic that um, this year has been. And I just love that um, you all are taking the uh, opportunity to um, document it. So, so that, like, yes, um, of course, um, we'll remember the the news headlines, but there's now um, music to represent it also, and that that that's just fantastic. Yeah, I think so. We titled the season actually um, "No Time for Silence" because we felt that um, as part of you know everything in most of 2020 has been a lot of really negative, kind of scary things going on in the world, that this can generate. Um, 
really beautiful music in response. And I think that's really the place of artists, um, you know, to spin these kind of um, dark things into something positive. Um, not necessarily, you know, um, very uplifting music per se, or very negative music, but just something that uh, connects on an expressive and emotional level with the human population. Um, and I think that is something we're going to get out of 2020. I think uh, we will remember all of the negativity yes. in the headlines, but I think we'll get some really beautiful art. And at Texas New Music Ensemble, we're just thrilled to be a part of um, a part of that positivity in society. Mm -hmm. Well, so um, other than the um, Texas New Music Ensemble and um, Texas Southern, is there um, something that, that you personally are um, currently working on? Yes, there is. Um, <laughs> and I won't say much. Um, yes, I have a um, commission that I've been working on, but it hasn't been announced by the organization yet. Um, it's a very exciting uh, work. Um, but yeah, I shouldn't say anything just yet because I, I don't want to get ahead of myself. Um, but yeah, it's been um, strangely enough, it's been really a rather busy year um, with the onset of, um, you know, isolation and all that things were really calm. Um, but I think as people are now preparing, um, you know, for what will be 2021, et cetera, and they're starting to learn how to kind of function in this new reality, um, things have really picked up very quickly. Um, so yeah, I immediately received multiple commissions, um, had to turn a couple down, and I took um, one that I'm really excited about. So please just stay tuned. Um, mm -hmm. My website is chadrobinson.net. Um, and you can also um, follow uh, Texas New Music Ensemble on Facebook and Twitter, Instagram, and we'll have um, announcements about that. But yes, once it's officially announced, I have a, a really big project I'm excited about. So I will announce that. Well, I am very uh, excited to hear that um, you've been dang busy. I, I know that uh, a lot of us kind of find it hard to, so it's, I I am um, very, um, excited for you and i am definitely looking forward to um um hearing more news on on that well um dr robinson it has been a just a great pleasure to meet with you and um um to kind of dive head first into this great piece i mean um there's not a whole lot of music um that that gets perform like this in a lot of um, um, universities and I just um, one of my favorite things about like new music is is um, working to just develop that something that's completely different and to try to make this more uh, yeah, accessible. So um, once again, just thank you so much for meeting with me and um, um, for um, making this great piece of new music. Oh, thank you for having me. Um, your playing has been wonderful here in rehearsal and I'm looking forward to the video very much. And I think you're right on about um, new music. It's, you know, I think the times are changing and, um, you know, this kind of ancient music, it's very beautiful, it's very uplifting. But as we discover now, um, that's not always the world we live in. And so even though um, new music can sometimes be daunting or sound strange, well, we live in a strange world. And it's the responsibility of those artists to translate that perspective into music. So I think um, I think new music is really getting a big push forward now. And I think that's going to continue to happen. And it's groups like Aura and performers like you that we have to thank for that. So thank you for all your hard work, dedication, and I'm looking forward to the video. Yes, sir. Well, thank you so much, sir.